They are brothers. There is a simplest way to the act of preaching, and this time I will do my best to follow it. This way consists just in underlining some brief sentences from the text itself and then building up on them some commentary. Of course, we'll not take the entire passages, but just a few words from today's first reading. Our purpose will be to learn something about temptation, sin, and redemption. From the Genesis verses, may I begin with Adam's reply to God's observation. Our forefathers said, The woman whom you put here with me gave me fruit from the tree, and so I ate it. He declines any responsibility. He wants to be regarded as the simple result of the circumstances. I was given the fruit. I ate it. The woman's reply is a bit more adult-like. In essence, she says that she was tricked. In fact, that is the very structure of temptation. It is a trick because it shows some good, some benefit, advantage or pleasure, but at the high price of infecting us with its deadly poison. It should be highlighted that the Lord asked both Adam and Eve. In doing so, he opens a dialogue with each one of them and also calls them to reflect upon the actions they have committed. This is the very beginning of repentance, to see in a new light, the light of the truth, that one has do what one has done and what little one has truly accomplished. What I'm trying to emphasize is that these very dialogues are already expressions of mercy in as much as they pave the way to regret, repentance, and eventually to new life. We should note that none of these are present in the words the Lord declares to the serpent. In this case, there is no dialogue for the serpent is unable to have any repentance. Its true name will be revealed in the last book of the Bible. It's the devil. It's Satan himself, full of hatred and envy towards humankind. Let's continue. I am of the opinion that the subsequent verses are seriously misinterpreted very often. The usual image is that of a vengeful God whose only interest seems to be to make Adam and Eve pay for their disobedience, and not only them, but also their descendants, who are us, by the way. And yes, it is good to remember that God is just and that the reward of sin is death. But let's dare to ask, is there anything beyond punishment in the words God uses to address this man and this woman? Toil and trouble will come both for men and for women. Work and family will be the realm of labor and struggle. This is the bad news. Yet, there's also good news. Women and men will learn as well that they are not gods and goddesses. By virtue of God's wise providence, every day will remind them, will remind us, of their condition, of our condition, of creatures. In fact, beloved creatures, who, through this desolation and consolation, 
are called to be pilgrims, people on the move towards a far better future. We realize then, my friends, that difficulty can be seen in two very different ways. As the simple result of the past, or as the promising preparation for the future. I hope that the grace of the Spirit allows us to see our own battles and blessing as blessings in disguise and to act in consequence. May the merciful, just, and powerful God grant us such a gift. Amen. <laughs>